you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, Mr. T here with a trig tutorial, and today we're going to be writing sine or cosine functions given a graph. And when we write our model, it'll look like this for our sine function and this for our cosine function. And we have to figure out the values of four of these parameters, A, B, C, and D. Uh, the procedures for finding those are the same for both functions. And so A is the amplitude, and then we have to decide whether to make it positive or negative based on how the graph uh, evolves or how it moves from the starting point. On sine functions, if we start at the midline and go up, A is positive. If we start at the midline and go down, it's going to be negative. For the cosine, if the function starts high, it's positive, and if it starts low, it'll be negative. B is related to the period. So in the last tutorial, when we were graphing, we determined the period of the function by using the formula 2 pi divided by b. If I solve this equation for b, then we can get the formula that to find b, we can take 2 pi and divide it by the period of the function, which we will find by looking at the graph. d is how much the graph is shifted up and down, so we will find the midline of our graph, and that value, the number of units up or down, will be d. And then we will finally pick a horizontal starting point. So if it's a sine function, it'll be a point on the midline. And if it's a cosine function, it'll either be a high or a low point. And when we were doing grafting, we used C divided by B to figure out uh, how far the graph was shifted, what the horizontal or phase shift was. And if I solve that equation for the letter C, I take B times the horizontal shift. So let's use these rules to write a couple models. Now when we look at a graph, we don't know whether this is a sine or a cosine because we don't know where the graph started. So we're going to use the same graph twice, and for this one we're going to write a sine model. And then we'll repeat the problem writing it using a cosine. So we might want to start out by finding our high points. So I'm just drawing a little dashed line over here. These are our high points and our low points, the bottoms of our troughs. And our midline is going to be halfway between. So this is our midline. And the sine function starts on the midline, so we have to pick a starting point. So I'm going to pick the closest place where the graph crosses the midline, closest to the y-axis. So I'm going to pick this point to be our starting point. And to find the period, we're going to have to go one complete pattern. So one complete pattern would end here. So this will kind of be our end point. Now, if we look at the graph here, this distance is our amplitude. So for this problem, the amplitude is 2. So that means A is going to have the value of 2. And now we have to look at this. Now, if I pick this as the starting point, we're going down. So A is going to be negative 2. To find our period, we need to find our distance from our starting to the end point. So we have 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 blocks. And I told you over here each block is pi over 8. So 16 times pi over 8 is 2 pi. So our period is 2 pi. So to find b, we take 2 pi and divide it by the period, which in this case is 2 pi, and we get 1. 
our midline is up at 5, so we were shifted up 5 uh, units, so D is 5. And to find C, our formula we had was the value of B, which is 1, times our starting point, how far we shifted. Now we shifted to the right 1, 2, 3 blocks, so 3 pi over 8. And 1 times 3 pi over 8 is 3 pi over 8. So now we just plug that into our template that we have here. And we would get our function here is y equals, let's see, d was 5, plus a, which was negative 2, sine, and now we have 1x minus our c. And that sine function, if we plugged it in a calculator or something, graphed it, would produce this graph. Now we're going to repeat the same process, except we're going to do it for the cosine function. Now our high and low points are the same. So again, this was our high, our high line, and this is our low line, and our midline was here. Now, if it's a cosine curve, we start either high or low. So the closest peak would be right here. So we're going to start here at negative pi over 8. We still go one pattern to get our period, and that was still 16 blocks. So the period is still, because uh, it's the same graph as before, 16 times pi over 8, which is 2 pi. Our amplitude here is 2, and we're starting high, so A is going to be positive 2 this time. B is 2 pi divided by the per uh, period, which was 2 pi, which is 1. D, we're still, our midline is still up 5, so we're 5, and C is B times our start value, negative pi over 8 negative pi over 8. So now we just plug into the template, so y equals 5, this time plus 2, cosine of x minus a negative pi over 8, so x plus pi over 8. Now we came up with two different functions. This is a cosine function, and this is a sine function, but they're equivalent because they produce the same graph. So good luck on uh, working your own problems. See you later. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready?